It's that time of the week again. You're in loser's bracket and are set to play against Lame Camper 216 for the 582nd time in a row. It's frustrating because despite how often you grind out the game or how much you really think you're improving, this bozo will always shatter your hopes and dreams with a clean dissection of your playstyle, a swift 2-0, and a fist bump that you'd really rather not give him. I know tons of you have been in this situation. I myself have struggled with bracket demons numerous times. Now overcoming them isn't easy, but there are some things that I learned during my process of constantly losing to the same person that I feel can benefit you guys a whole lot. I'm not gonna pretend that I don't struggle with demons at all anymore, but man, have I learned a lot from losing to the same Sonic player every week. You know who you are, Sonic player. The first step is to understand why you're losing. This may seem easy bake oven obvious, but it's critical to know if you want to actually beat them. There are several good ways to help guide you in figuring out why you always lose, but first you need to know the two ways of thinking that you should always, always avoid. These thought processes will hinder you and make beating your demon simply much harder. My character loses the matchup. This is pointless and unproductive. I explained in my video on main characters that if you're a significantly better player than someone, then it shouldn't matter if it's a losing matchup. You should be able to pick up on their habits and punish them consistently if you're for sure the better player. I should also add that claiming a character to be lame or gimmicky, like Little Mac with his KO punch, is equally unproductive and doesn't solve anything. Counter argument. But what if we're close in skill level and my character still loses the matchup? That's rough, because the fact that you're so even means whatever secondary you decide to pick up, if that's what you want to do, will automatically be sent much lower in player skill tiers. For example, if you guys are around 55-45 in skill ratio with your mains, and you pick up a fresh new secondary, the skill ratio will drop to like 75-25, simply because you haven't invested as much time into the new character. Now if you're both mid-level and it's an 80-20 matchup like Rosa Ness and Smash 4, then it may finally be time to work hard on a good, polished secondary. But for a matchup that's hard but still doable, the tricks that I'm about to show you should still work if you don't pick up a new character. They just outplayed me. Better, but still not of any use to you. This is the kind of thing you would say if you were content with losing to this guy all the time, and judging by the fact that you clicked on this video, that's probably not the case. Yes, they did outplay you, but they didn't just outplay you. The use of that word implies that you aren't willing to do anything about your loss and are going to be sitting around, awaiting the day that you finally improve enough to beat that person. This mindset is really just you avoiding the problem altogether. But what if they are a genuinely much better player than me? If your goal with this video is to learn how to beat to buzz, then sorry, I can't help you there. Your demon should be someone who generally gets similar results to you, hence why you always play in brackets since your seeds are so similar. Maybe you have wins on every PR player in your region except this one guy. That's a demon. If you're referring to a master level player who gets top 8 at nationals consistently while you can't even win your own locals, then sorry fam, that's not who this is for. So why do you always lose? Well this may or may not be the case, but here's the first reason that I'm sure will resonate with at least some of you. Fighting them gives you an emotional reaction. Perhaps your demon plays a lame character that you really hate. Maybe you're so tired of losing to them that each set feels like you're trying to get revenge for all those times you've played previously. Do you hear a voice inside your head more when you play against this particular person than other players? Is it a negative, frustrated, worrisome, or insecure voice? Now before you call me a monk or something, I want you to realize that these negative emotions probably legitimately are affecting your gameplay. Instead of focusing on what you should be doing during the match, you're focused on being angry, stressed or worried. I remember feeling this way so many times in the past. I would take the first stock against someone who normally beat me, but then they would take mine before I could get any extra percent on them. Nobody wants their lead to have gone to waste, but if this happened to me, I would become mad at myself, frustrated, and generally using mental energy that could have otherwise been used to think about what I needed to do to win. Your thoughts distract you. They suck you out of the moment and keep you from playing how you normally do. If you feel like you struggle with this or any other mental health issue, then I suggest you go check out our sponsor, Better help.com. Oh shoot. Never mind, I'm out. Okay, just kidding. But really, how do you overcome this? Well, first you gotta acknowledge it. Done. I got you, fam. Now every time you play your demon in bracket, notice these thought patterns and stop them as soon as they show up. Also, be sure to compare your thoughts when fighting your demon versus fighting some other random player to find out if you actually have this problem. But sometimes that isn't enough. It can be hard to control your thoughts without proper experience. So that's where I'd recommend meditation. Now there are a lot of different ways to meditate and I'm sure many of you are complete noobs to the whole concept. So to get started, I'd recommend 
recommend checking out a couple videos done by a YouTuber who did not sponsor me, but who genuinely has helped me on this topic, Improvement Pill. I'll leave links in the descripty. There are so many other benefits to meditation that I could go on forever about. If you guys want me to make a Smash specific meditation video, then let me know. I would love to do one. I feel like I'm pretty experienced with controlling my thoughts and whatever, so feel free to leave a comment if you want me to do a video on it. But in general, what you're gonna get out of meditating is clearer focus on the present. You won't be stuck in your thoughts about the past or the future. All of your mental energy will be on what's going on right in front of you. And that's gonna go a long way if you get frustrated easily. Not just in Smash, but in life as well. So now that we know that you should be keeping your mentality in check, what are some other factors that could be causing you to suck so much against that one gosh darn player? Reason 2. You have bad habits. Figuring out your bad habits is a key factor in getting better at the game. Everyone has them, with some being more prominent than others. But sometimes your habit can be so bad that your opponent will know how to exploit it enough to win a billion matches in a row. Maybe you have a problem with always rolling towards center stage, or you recover low every time, or you always spot dodge after a whiff. The possibilities are endless. If you can eliminate these habits that your demon is punishing all the time, they will be thrown off guard and have to find out a brand new way to beat you. You may not have an easy time figuring these habits out just from your memory, so if you two players ever play on stream, then take full advantage of that opportunity. I'm also gonna add in saving replays if you guys ever play on your console or online, since I know not everyone goes to tournaments. Anyway, I wish I went over my old matches more back in the day. It really does help you. Look out for what specific options your opponent is punishing consistently. A lot of the time, you might get away with having these bad habits against other players, sometimes due to general inexperience, but this particular person does know how to abuse them and beat you for it, so make sure you're doing your best to find out what they are. Analysis time. Take this match with me against Valor, for example. I got the lead first stock and built up some percent until I lost my own stock. But then, for some reason, I decided to play super aggressive. I wasn't thinking about how playing patient could benefit me or anything. I was just following my habitual instinct to go in hard. I played it so poorly, landing with neutral Bs and Nairs at the same frickin' timings, which caused me to lose my lead fast and eventually drop the entire game. Valor knew how antsy I was playing, so he made the most of it by punishing me over and over again. If I had played the rest of the game more slow and methodically, then it would have been much harder for him to get his lead back, especially considering Sonic isn't the best when he's losing. My bad habit though, which was aggression, made me throw my lead out the window and lose when I really could have avoided it. Try to analyze your matches just like I did and you may find a nasty gameplay interference of yours that needs fixing. Solving this habit will not only help you with beating your demon, but also fighting anyone else. If it's pretty obvious that you're going for the same option 99% of the time, then even more players will start to pick up on it too. But what if they counter my counterplay? Then and maybe you should counter their counter to your counterplay. This is just how Smash works, kid. If I decided to camp against Valor and he tried cornering me, I might have switched to an aggro playstyle for a brief moment to throw him off guard or something, I don't know. The higher level you get in Smash, the more you realize that the game is all just a complex version of rock, paper, scissors. What I'm saying is that you gotta make sure you're not subconsciously choosing predictable options all the time. And if you are, go back and figure out what those habits are and fix them. After you've focused on making yourself good enough to beat your demon, both through mindfulness and habit fixing, it'll then be time for you to get that extra little push so you can finally get that sweet, sweet victory. Yep, you guessed it. It's time to start outplaying this guy. Where am I going with this? Well, I'll get straight into it. If you figure out their habits, then your chances of winning will shoot straight up. You have flaws in your gameplay, right? Guess what? Everyone does. Once you learn how to exploit their weaknesses, winning is going to be a lot more doable. Now there are several ways to go about this. You can ask a player with a winning record on them what they know about beating that boy. You may not get a serious response all the time, but I myself have done this a bit and legitimately got some good insight. Also, you could just watch the sets where your demon ends up losing and see what specific options of theirs are getting punished over and over again. Then you can take a note of what they're doing and start punishing them in your matches. You can always use the old match analysis technique again and see what kinds of options they're getting away with every time. Going back to that Valor example, you can see that he's rolling towards center stage a lot and getting away with it because I somehow believe that he'll be shielding by the ledge instead. Knowing this habit could have given me an advantage, since there are obviously many ways to punish a roll, but I wasn't prepared as I didn't go back and analyze anything beforehand. As you get better and better, you'll be able to adapt to your opponent mid-match a lot of the time, and you won't need to deeply focus on anything either. Your gameplay will start to be more based off your gut, but especially if you're just starting out, reviewing these matches can help you pick up on things that may not have crossed your mind 
time during the actual set, where you may have been nervous or not thinking straight. Even if you're not new, I'd still highly recommend this. It really does work. I'll end this video with some manly words of inspiration. You got this. Even if your set record is 20 and 0, and they do tend to get this way sometimes, there's always a way to improve. Nobody plays the game perfectly, so all you need to do is play better than this person if you want to win. Practice hard, efficiently, frequently, and frickin' analyze, it's great. And you're sure to slay this dragon once and for all. Okay, I'm really bad at this, so I'm just gonna end it here. Again, let me know if you want to see a full video on meditation, and I totally got you. And be sure to subscribe if you want to see more dank guides like this. I also have a Twitter, which is the best way for you to follow me and ask questions. And I stream if that's something you're interested in. But let's not turn this video into a giant advertisement, so I'll just end it with a good old sound of Vocaloid. Until next time, po-pee-po-pee-po-pee-po. That was the cringiest thing I ever said.